Hi everyone, welcome to part 3. Now the example I want to give uh, to you is the woman in the wilderness. Um, this is um, extremely uh, a symbolic uh, scripture in the Bible where John writes, And there appeared a great wonder in the heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, um, a lot of people uh, who um, studied this uh, particular scripture wonders who this woman was. Now, uh, to point out this, um, there's the sun, the moon, and the stars that matched uh, Joseph's dream, and this was in um, Genesis 37, 5 through 11. Now, the sun and the moon represents Joseph's parents, and the stars represent the son of Jacob, you know, the twelve tribes. Okay, now, um, God calls Israel a woman, and that's, it was Israel and Judah that brought forth a man-child who is Jesus, right? And that's in Revelation 12, 5. Now, the woman then uh, seems to be represent Israel. Now, when we go to the New Testament, in the, the church is described as a woman. Now, if you can go to Galatians 4, 26, it'll tell you right there that Christ is called the Son of Righteousness and closed the church, Romans 13 and 14, and that the 12 stars um, corresponds to the 12 apostles, you see. This is according to this interpretation, the woman represents the church. Okay, so wherever you see a woman represented, it represents the church. And um, because it wouldn't represent Israel, because it would represent all the believers in Jesus Christ, right, in the end times. Uh, actually, it makes no difference which interpretation that you do agree with, if it's um, the literal woman, Mary, who gives birth to the man-child, was an Israelite. You know, Mary was an Israelite, and she uh, symbolizes Israel, the righteous remnant to which, you know, Jesus was born to. Now, once the man-child was caught up unto God, in verse 5, the woman, who, you know, we think is Mary, became a part of the New Testament Church of God. Okay. Therefore, regardless of which interpretation we agree with, that that woman who flees into the wilderness represents the New Testament church, the spiritual Israel. Now, a lot of you people are going to uh, uh, believe this, and um, but you know, take that up with the Lord and pray about that. You know, um, uh, because it's it's certainly not. Uh, the state of Israel, but I'm not going to get it in, into, you know, I'm not going to get into any argument or anything, because I'm, um, I'm going to have to deal with that later, and and, uh, and uh, pray about this to the Lord uh, a little bit further, because uh, there's a lot of questions uh, I need to ask him also. Now, if you notice that the, uh, what happens to the church, and that the woman, the church flees into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days that's um, 1260 days now um, a lot of people think too that this 1260 day period the first two in years but when you think about it um, God had protected the church, you know, all through the centuries where he had sent them to, you know, to flee uh, to a place of safety uh, during that time. And then we get into, like, some who had died of, of you know, of martyrdom. But it, let's take this as a 1260-day period. So during this time, this is the end time. That the church place was not a single place in a remote corner of the world, but involves uh, many lands in many countries. 
because the first six is a symbolic confirmation of that promise what Jesus gave in Matthew 16 18 says I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it in other words God will always provide a means of preserving his true church and while God did preserve his church during the um, period throughout history uh, martyrdom continued to occur okay now can we expect that the coming tribulation period will be any different no because when if you if all were martyred and if some were saved and some were martyred now if all were martyred uh, we wouldn't have uh, uh, well we would we probably wouldn't have been born um, you know through our ancestors but that's kind of like complex stuff anyway and I don't want to get into that uh, but I'm, I'm sure you understand what I mean that God always keeps a remnant he has a remnant uh, that's left alive to to, to continue the lineage uh, of the church and uh, in Revelation 12 7 11 through 11 tells of a celestial war and a result of that uh, where God casts out Satan from the heavens. Now this is happening in the near future. And, uh, and it will bring in the beginning of the Great Tribulation. Now where are the stains at this point? And now are they hiding away in a place of safety? And have they been raptured from, from the earth? Okay, get this. Because a lot of people are believing in the rapture. Okay, there is not going to be in a rapture. And because the next verse shows that they are still here on planet earth. And are still having to contend with the devil. Now they, the brethren, in verse 10, overcame the devil, him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Now if they were in heaven... And now how could they be overcoming the devil right if they were in heaven and uh, to overcome them with the, him with the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony you know they had to be here on earth right and they loved not their lives unto death okay so they had to be here on earth now verse 13 says well when the, the dragon that's Satan the dragon of Satan so that he was cast unto earth he, pers he per persecuted the woman, the church, which brought forth the man-child, which is Jesus. Throughout this entire scenario, there is no mention of the church being snatched out, snatched away. Rather, we find that when the devil is cast down, the church is still here in plain view and is, pers and is persecuted by the devil. Okay, there you go. But God will not allow the devil to destroy his church, for he has promised that the gates of hell would never prevail against it. And notice that in what the next verse says. Okay, and to the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. Now this is symbolic of uh, God's protection. You can find this in Exodus chapter 19 verse 4. That she might fly into the wilderness and to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent okay now this um, this timing frame means is that the time the times and half a time refers to um, a time is is one year and times is is two years and half a time is is half of a year so that's three and a half years uh, so, um, this is the, the three and a half years before the second coming of Jesus, before, or before he returns. And, uh, so, let's see. We all agree, or do we all agree now that the woman and the eagle are, are symbols now? And that, uh, is that the woman is the church and the eagle is God's uh, divine protection. So we assume that the place is a literal place confined to certain very limited and geographical boundaries. Is it? 
Okay, now if the church, um, church's place is during, uh, that period of time, then, uh, what, I say, the, the three and a half, one, three and one and a half years periods, does, uh, precede Christ's, uh, return? Does it? Okay. Well, let's go to verse 17. The devil, following another failed attempt to destroy the woman or the church, turns his, his attention elsewhere. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keeps the commandments of God and has the testimony of Jesus Christ. And the the people, as he was referring to, that keep the commandments of God and has the testimony of Jesus Christ. Is it the Muslims? Or is it the Buddhists? No, it's not. This can only be described by Christians only, the members of God's true church. So, you hear like all this New Age stuff about this oneness and, and stuff that, you know, all religious is all the same. It's not. It's a lie. Because it's telling you right here in the Bible is that those that keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, no other religion does that but the true Christianity. And the woman and the remnant of her seed or the rest of her offspring the man child being her first, which is Jesus, he began the church, is the true church and her children. And these uh, descriptions of the serpent's attempt to destroy the woman or the church symbolically portrays that the devil's efforts throughout history to destroy the true church. And the devil's pursuit of the woman's children symbolically describes that the devil's pursuit of true Christians in the last days. It says, make no mistake about this, guys, that the end time remnant and the rest of her offspring is not a group of New Agers or people that who are just halfway straddle the fence, say, or uh, take, you know, take their journey and then kind of like drop about halfway through it. No, it's nothing like that. Um, he, these people are the faithful. Those that keep his commandments and do not back down for anything. They hold tenaciously to the truth of God in spite of severe persecution. They do not buckle under. You hold on to him because you see what's on the other side. You keep your eyes on Jesus. And he'll get you through it. Because he made that promise that, you know, his His kingdom is coming. But you, you've got to, you have to hold strong. And you pray for strength. Um, the, scenario, the scenario of the woman or the church and her flight to safety alludes to the flight of the Nazarenes. The, the Jewish uh, Christians from Jerusalem who fled to Pela uh, in the year 67 AD um, is, is a type uh, also and I'll show you a picture here of it's a, it's a Greece uh, city uh, called Pela and this is the country where uh, Alexander the Great came from see and this is the remains uh, of that once city of Pela. So this is where they fled to at that time. So there are places of safety that you can go to uh, during that time. Um, so I'll leave a link to that also because I am getting towards the end here and I'll finish discussing this and I hope this is really helpful to you and uh, I'll be talking to you in uh, part four. Okay, see you, and I'll talk to you there.